Hey everybody, Boris Lasser from BK Force. Welcome to our weekly Force technicals for 11 11 to 11 15 of 13. As always, trading foreign exchange and margin carries a high level risk, may not be suitable for all investors. I ask you to read this disclaimer very carefully to understand all the risks associated trading and margin and seek advice from a independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. Well, what a wild week we had this week. Incredible movement um, in all the currency pairs. Let's take a look at the euro first. I think I actually want to show the, the, the power of this move on the weekly charts. Because we had a massive drop, of course, off the 34.50, 35 support level. But what's interesting is that um, while the drop was very, very severe, it stopped at 33 and has not been able to breach that low. Um, even today, we made a run back to the 33s off of very strong NFTs and still were able to hold it. So the critical question, I think, in front of us is um, how durable is the support level? And that's going to be... Um, probably answered next week as, as we continue to probe the lower edges of this of this move. Certainly the shift has now moved over to the dollar in the sense that the market is much more confident about the prospect of taper, perhaps maybe not uh, as soon as December, but certainly the possibility of, of January um, and at very latest March. While at the same time the ECB is moving in the other direction and definitely wants to see the euro a little bit lower. I think uh, it's clear that the uh, European corporate sector is dying at euro above 135. They're putting a lot of the pressure on the monetary policymakers to want to try to, want to um, push the currency lower. That having been said, though, you have to ask yourself, why has the euro been so strong despite the fact that you've had everything but the kitchen sink thrown at it? And I think one possible reason is that you've had a lot of capital flows come into the currency. What I mean by that is there's been a lot of Asian central bank buying, a lot of Asian central bank diversification into Euro. And every time it's been a very much a buy to dip uh, mentality in the pair. Um, as evidenced by the by the way, if you look at the daily charts at the 33 level where you had buyers coming in yesterday, buyers coming in today, um, and it gets continuously bid up. So the gap over here is very interesting technically. We filled it. Um, natural response is to kind of fill it, come back up. Um, 34.35 is, is, is clearly the uh, the cap mo move in this um, um, in this particular retrace rally, but uh, we may very well be in for a period of a little bit of consolidation here. Like in other words, we could have another week of churn where we do 33.34 um, until the market kind of makes up its mind as to uh, you know further downward movement or um, a retrace back up to the top side. 35 is the um, natural resistance level now, which used to be support. To the bottom, the next really strong area of support in the euro is 31, and that's really where uh, a lot of the uh, shorts are going to try to focus all of their energy, try to eye that level as a potential target for uh, for a full unwind. That would really uh, give the euro pretty much a full unwind of this move all the way from from uh, September. So we'll have to see how well um, the whole thing plays out. There isn't too much event risk next week. It's, it's a sort of a quiet news week. Um, a lot of it may depend just simply on rhetoric, on, um, on unexpected events. Uh, for the time being, 33 is hard, cold, stone support. And until it's broken, um, the euro is a buy-to-dip trade, hard, hard as it is to believe, given the absolute decimation that we saw this week. Um, yet, on the other hand, there's another one of those really interesting – let me just pull up the end here for a second – really interesting and kind of uh, – very volatile trades. Now, yet you know, we, we, we noted yesterday that this 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 flame out to the top side, flame out to the downside, is a very very volatile signature, technically. But what I think is encouraging uh, from a technical point of view is the recovery today, and more importantly, the recovery that held and closed above the 99 handle. That is quite good. The next uh, bullish signal that we need to see in the end is a close above this particular. 99.40 flame out. If we can close above 99.40 on a daily basis, that really does set us up for a full-on run towards the 100. Um, and actually, and this is one of the interesting things that, that you can look on the side, if you sort of think that the euro is washed out at 33s for the time being, and yen continues its inexorable move higher, then that really calls for a more um, constructive view on where's my, where's my euro yen. On euro yen, which obviously also got pummeled the last few days, but look, it's it's essentially held this 31 level, and so I, I think it's kind of interesting. You sort of almost have to. This is a double bottom here in, in, in the euro um, yen at 31. You kind of have to think that perhaps, basically, the idea here is if as long as 33 holds in the euro, it's a buy. As long as 31 holds in the euro yen, it's a buy. Um, all of these uh, support levels for the time being holding could be an interesting speculative long in both of the pairs. 
But anyways, for the yen, as far as the yen itself goes, the trade here, clearly to the top side, if, as long as we can clear 90, uh, 99.40. To the bottom, um, what will really turn this thing dark, very, very dark uh, for, for the bulls, is if we not only take out 98s, but if we take out the lows here, this 97.50, that would bring us right back down to 97, which is the last really area of defense for you know, for dollar yen bulls. And then a crunch through there would take us all the way down to 95. What would precipitate that kind of a move? really don't know, but I mean, you, you know, uh, a highly dovish stance from the Fed, uh, a change of pace. I don't, it's, it's hard to imagine the yen unwinding so much given the relatively buoyant economic backdrop we have, but uh, risk aversion, there's a million different things that could happen. What's still worrying me, what's still troubling is the fact that we had this big, big turnaround on Thursday, um, and until that turnaround is completely wiped off, off the charts, um, you have to proceed a little bit cautiously, but nevertheless, the uh, path right now is to the top side, certainly, as long as we can basically take out this uh, these highs over here. Um, cable, on the other hand, is just sort of, you know, tr playing a me too um, trade with everything else. It, it, it broke below 60 just on, on anti-dollar, uh, on pro-dollar moves today off the NFPs. What's um, frustrating, I think, for cable bulls is you have consistently good economic data, but very little forward progress in the currency pair itself. And I think what you really need here is a, a change of tone out of the BOE uh, that would reflect the much more productive economic uh, picture that you see in the UK. And until you get that change of tone out of the BOE, uh, cable seems to be very hard, having a hard time breaking past the 61, um, and it's basically become a 59-61 trade. Um, there, is there potential here for a further unwind? There is. Ironically enough, cable is, is notorious for sort of going against the grain um, and uh, having very severe corrections. So don't don't be shocked if we break the 59s and maybe even come into 58s, despite the fact that the economic data could be relatively um, okay. Um, to the top side, though, what you really need to do to to get much more bullish on the pair is first, obviously, you need to get the 61s cleared and held. Um, but the real you know, the real up move will happen as if we can move through the 62s. This also, I think, plays well into the whole euro pound story, which euro pound here is a sell on a break of 83s. This is this would be a either an uber bearish move on the euro or now a much healthier uh, bullish move on the pound. Until then, it's um, you know, if you're a spec, you could you could possibly try to make it a buy with a very, very short stop here, but until then, it's just not a trade, even though. Structurally and um, fundamentally, it does make sense to be short euro, euro pound until this 83 level is broken. Um, it could very well be uh, essentially a fake out of the move here, and I wouldn't want to get short at these levels. That, by the way, break the 83 break does open up a run all the way out to 81s, which is the um, if we go to the weeklies, so you can actually see this on the weekly charts, which is um, uh, the highest here from the beginning of the year. This is where it could sort of test the 81s and the downside on a longer term basis, on a, on a weekly chart basis, you definitely can see distribution in euro pound with lower highs continuously here but to get really comfortable you got to see the break of the 83s um, to get further momentum to the downside um, and last let's take a look at the Aussie which has been um, certainly weak this week because all of a sudden we have significantly bad uh, Australian economic data we had really really horrendous um, unemployment numbers uh, we had very dovish RBA the RBA, as a matter of fact, even said that they're willing to um, entertain further rate cuts. I mean, they've just thrown everything they can at the idea of getting Aussie down, certainly down below 95, but in their perfect vision, they'd like to see the Aussie at 90 or below because that's what they believe they need in order to rebalance the, the Australian economy and get the balance of trade numbers more in line. So there's a lot of pressure uh, by the central bank to, to try to trade the currency down. That's actually a very interesting um, trade in the uh, in the FX market, you almost never want to be on the opposite side of the central bank um, unless you're George Soros and you want to break the Bank of England. But those stories are few and far between. Most of the times the, break, the bank breaks you. So uh, my point being is that is that having now put in a pretty severe uh, down move for the last three weeks, uh, we could have acceleration to the downside and a possible uh, flush here all the way down to the 92 level. If you look at it dailies, um, the break, the break of the 94s was pretty significant. The fact that we, we couldn't even close above 94s is is, is uh, should be ominous for for uh, 
uh, Aussie bulls. And this is effectively now become a head and shoulders, just waiting to break the uh, the shoulder here to the downside. Uh, one thing that could create a uh, counter trend rally here is Chinese data over the weekend, if that turns out to be much stronger than expected. Um, that could give Aussie a little bit of a boost. But still, um, Aussie really uh, looks to be much more of a sell the rally with 95.50 as a key resist level. And anything uh, below here, like sort of in the, into the 93, uh, well, 93.50 was, 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 was the low support here, but a break of 93.50 is really opening up a run all the way out to possibly 93s, 92s uh, on a longer term basis. This actually also brings up an interesting point is that on a relative basis, where's, uh, where's my pound Aussie? The other trade that, look, that looks kind of interesting if you believe in, in Aussie weakness going forward is, well, let me see if I can get this. Sorry. Well, you see on pound Aussie here, um, clear, nice clearance of this 170 level. Um, and of course, you'd have to trade this. This is a very volatile pair with large, large intraday moves. So you have to give yourself quite a lot of distance. But certainly, uh, either a break above the highs here, like 170, 80 or so, um, could give us a move all the way out to possibly 172. So uh, on the uh, on the Aussie front, one way to trade the Aussie possibly could be through the pound Aussie long, especially. And this is a key thing: we do have a whole bunch of UK data this week um, that could precipitate. Uh, breakouts to the upside in this particular pair. So that's uh, the ideas for this week. Wishing you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. Um, it should be a little bit more of a quiet week. It doesn't mean that there won't be opportunities to, uh, to find some interesting ideas. This is Boris Lasswork, BK Forex, over and out.